Hi everyone, welcome to Pete the Wargamer. Today we are going to be creating another Blade Guard veteran kit bash, but this time we'll be building them to represent the Sons of Rus. Going into this conversion, the Blade Guard already have a knightly appearance, and as a result, my previous conversion of the Deathwing was much more straightforward. However, I feel that the Viking aesthetic of the Space Wolves may prove a little trickier to achieve this time around, but let's get straight into it and see how we do. I'm sorting things off here by removing all the required parts to build one of the Blade Guard miniatures from the Indomitus box set. Once everything has been removed and cleaned up, we can start chopping things up. My first task is to start to remove some of the components that fit into that knightly styling that the Blade Guard minis have. I'm starting off by removing the small trinket attached to the belt. Depending on which of the three miniatures you're doing this for, it may require more or less work. But for this particular torso, we need to not only clip away the symbol, but also try to carefully shave the area down with a knife or a file. You can see here why it's important to not build your model straight away, as the other parts of the model would just get in the way. Don't worry if you're not able to achieve a perfect finish at this stage, as we will cover over this area later on with some other items. So next, we want to continue to tone down that existing Blade God Space Knight theme, by removing the small armpit protecting shield, more commonly known as a rondel. Because I want to get a clean cut here whilst keeping the rondel intact for my bits box, I'm using an extremely sharp scalpel for this. By running the blade down the back of the rondel, we should be able to avoid damaging it too much. Once the rondel is removed, you need to smooth down the remaining area. Again, don't worry about that slight mess that we've left behind here, as this will be covered up later. With that completed, you can glue this component to the front of the torso. Moving away from the torso in this next step, we are going to replace the existing sculpted on left shoulder pad with one of the aggressor shoulder pads taken from the Space Wolf Primus upgrade sprue. Now as the shoulder pad is already sculpted on, this next step is going to take a little bravery and a pair of sharp clippers. Begin by removing the bulk of the shoulder pad with the clippers. You want to maintain the rough shape of a quartered sphere. Every now and again, bring in your Space Wolf shoulder pad and check the fit. This will guide you as to where you need to make your next cuts. Once the new shoulder pad is sitting a little more comfortably, we can switch over to using a knife or a file to smooth out the area. This step may seem quite daunting because there is a lot of clipping and there is really no going back once you start cutting. But because we're covering over the area with another component, we can get away with a few mistakes. Once you're happy with the fit, the new pad can be glued over the top in much the same way as you would attach a regular Space Marine shoulder pad. If you wanted to take this step further, you could cut down the ridge from the right shoulder pad too to better match this one. But I think it looks fine without it, so I've left the pad alone for now. Sticking with the same left arm, we can now think about adding our shield. Again, the current Blade God shield is much better suited to the likes of the Dark Angels and the Black Templars than our beardy Battle Brothers so this needs to be swapped out. Luckily for us, there are a whole bunch of Wolf-inspired shields available to us. Wolfen, Thunderwolf Cavalry, and Wolfguard Terminators all come with suitable shields, but personally, I've opted for the Terminator shields because A, I already have some, and B, I'll be using some other parts from that kit too. Unlike my previous Deathwing conversion, adding the shield is much more straightforward and just requires us to remove the protruding tab from the left forearm. The shield already comes with a terminator hand that we can use, so go ahead and glue it straight to the arm. For this next step, we need to make sure that an addition to the chest won't get in the way of the arm's placement. Because this mini is a snap fit one, we can take advantage of this and do a dry fit. With the arm in place, we now know that any adjustments that we make will not get in the way of the arm being added later on. So to cover the area that we removed the rondel from, we need something that is wolfy and will fit in with the elite theming of this model. And in my book, that means only one thing. Dead animal bits. Yes, our ever useful converter's best friend has provided us with this section of wolf pelt taken from the Wolf Guard Terminator's box set. We'll be adding this to the model so that it fits between the shoulder pad and the gorget and hangs down across the model's torso. We need to first of all trim it down to length as it's currently a little too long. Ideally, you want to trim this down to about an inch in length. To ensure that this will fit in the narrowing gap between the shoulder and the gorget, we will need to make a diagonal cut, starting at the left side and moving down towards the right at a roughly 45 degree angle. 
With this step, I would highly recommend testing your fit regularly to ensure that you're not cutting away too much at any one time and overshooting the mark. You may also find that some trimming to the torso area as well as the underside of the wolf pelt is required in order to ensure that you achieve the best fit. Once you are happy that everything is sitting nicely, you can go ahead and glue the piece into place, safe in the knowledge that you can remove the right arm and not have it causing problems later on. To cover over another item that we removed earlier, I'll be using one of the Space Wolf's knives taken from one of the many Space Wolf kits. This should fit quite nicely over the area that we removed the symbol from at the beginning of this conversion guide. Not only does this cover up an otherwise messier looking spot, but it also adds to the arm to the teeth combat veteran aesthetic that we're trying to build upon here. If you have any other Space Wolf paraphernalia, you can attach these to the model at this stage as well. If there was ever a way of cranking up a model's awesomeness up to 11, then that is slapping on a huge frost axe like this one from the Wolf God Terminator set. Not only does it bear a striking resemblance to Kratos' Leviathan axe, but it is also a quick way of firmly cementing your miniature as a space wolf. Again, the axe comes with a hand already attached. It is a Terminator one, but the slightly chunkier hand sits quite nicely against the larger forearm guards that the Blade Guard have. You will, however, need to remove the sword from the right arm. As the forearm armor extends past the wrist, you will need to make two converging cuts. One cut going through the wrist from below, and one diagonal cut below the forearm guard. These should meet in the middle, and the hand should come away mostly intact. Next, we'll need to make a series of trims to the frost axe hand and the forearm's wrist joints. Keep making small adjustments a bit at a time and then comparing the two halves together. Once you're happy that they're sitting nicely, you can go ahead and glue them into place. The next couple of steps are really quite straightforward and are pretty much just straight component swaps. The first of these is the backpack. Personally, I think that the Iron Halo present on the Blade God's backpack, again, doesn't quite fit in with the Space Wolf aesthetic, so I'll just be using a regular Primus Power Pack instead with the addition of a dead animal bit, of course. Similarly, the knightly helmets of the Blade Guard don't really have that Viking style we're looking for. Luckily, we can circumnavigate this problem entirely by adding in a bare Space Wolf head that can be sourced from a whole array of kits. On top of that, you're also left with a pretty cool helmet for your bits box. And with that, the only thing left to do is to base and paint your miniature, and you should be left with something that looks like this. And here we have our converted Space Wolf Blade Guard Veteran. I decided to paint him up in the colours of the Heresy Era Space Wolves, simply because I much prefer that colour scheme. Now, I really hope that you enjoyed watching this and that you've picked up a few tips to go about tackling your own Space Wolf Blade Guard too. For the individual components from the Space Wolf kit, I'd recommend checking out Bitsbox, who helped me out with some of the parts needed for this video. But if it's full kits that you're after, then be sure to check out Firestorm Games using my affiliates link in the description below. They offer discounts on Games Workshop products and other wargaming materials too. Plus, anything you buy after using that link will send just a little bit of money my way too, with no extra cost to yourselves, which I can then put directly into producing more of these videos. Alternatively, you can support me by becoming a member of my channel by hitting the join button below, or you can check out my Patreon, which has a link in the description. Be sure to join my Discord as well, and come along and speak with an excellent community of wargaming loving people, and the link to that is also found in the description. So, the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.